Welcome to the QC Fit Fest podcast. I'm Jess Joni along with Chris Maltzberger and one of our guest speakers or special guest speakers for QC Fit Fest will be joining us here in a few minutes. Ken Yoshida, Mr. Japan, world renowned bodybuilder and just so much he's accomplished in his career. We're going to check in with him in just a few minutes, but I first wanted to make sure you knew all about the QC Fit Fest. It's our first ever event downtown Davenport at the Q at the River Center. Um, and that is happening Saturday, September 11th from a 11 to 6. If you'd like to join our mission, head over to qcfitfest.com. Take a look at everything that we have going on and events throughout the year, as well as Hardwood Heroes, which is an upcoming event the day after on Sunday, September 12th. Uh, for basketball camps, we've got a really great camp coming up with uh, Travis Tarpin at the Tarpin School of Karate with Hoist Gracie. And um, that one, the VIP section's already sold out, but if you want to join, there's still time to do that. And if you'd like to be a vendor, with us and get your interactive experience, your product or service to attendees at the River Center, make sure you email us vendor at qcfitfest.com. I'm going to bring on Ken Yashuda now. Ken is a world-class bodybuilder who has competed in every major bodybuilding challenge around the world and won the Mr. Japan title in his first Mr. Japan competition. Ken Yashuda, welcome to the QC Fit Fest podcast. Hey, thank you very much. Now, there. <laughs> oh, I am so excited to have you here. You, your picture is right there on our website. You're in your poses. It's amazing. Wait. It is so amazing to to have you um, in the Quad Cities, September 11th. Now, what got you into bodybuilding? These are always the questions that are burning in my mind. Well, initially, I was a baseball player, believe it or not, and I wanted to be the first baseball player out of Japan in a major league. And uh, that was over probably 30, close to 30 years ago now. But uh, I hurt my elbow. I was a pitcher and a hitter, like uh, Otani playing for the Angels right now. Crazy good, right? <laughs> so I could hit, I could pitch, I could do both, but uh, I hurt my elbow. Uh, that was it. Tommy John surgery wasn't that good that those days. And, uh, you know, I wasn't able to pitch anymore. So uh, that was the end of my baseball career uh, in college. And uh, so then I started to uh, bodybuild because I always liked to lift weights uh, for baseball and martial arts. And, uh, you know, just to, the truth is a lot of uh, coaches and trainers didn't know what to eat, how to train right for muscles or different purposes, sports performance, building muscles, the strength, or just to bring up the energy. And uh, I was always interested. So the best way to basically achieve in that kind of a field, it was uh, actually bodybuilding because you have to be a body is actually your own basically beginning pig. If you do it wrong, right, you don't build muscles that you get hurt. Or if you do it right, you can take it to all the way to, to the top. So, um, you know, that's the only that's the whole reason I started to do bodybuilding. Well, that is so interesting to me. And you said something that really piqued my interest because, you know, I, I'm a certified health coach. I really talk a lot about food as fuel and right. the right foods in your body that will help not only build, but also help you recover. Um, how much did you learn about that? Um, because I, I, I'm going to rack your brain at the event, but how yeah. much, you know, was food such a huge part of what it was that you, you did? Well, I would say, uh, 70%. You know, the training part is you still have to train, right? And But the still that's 30%. What you eat matters. And, uh, you know, it's like a car. You, you can have a Ferrari, but if you don't have the right oil and gas, it doesn't even move, right? So, yeah, what you put into your body is the most important thing. That is exactly the way I always explain it. So nobody's going to argue with me there. And if they do, Ken, I'm going to send them your way, okay? Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have Ken Yashuda as my personal um, security guard when I'm on stage talking about food as fuel and mindset. Chris, do you have any questions for Ken? Yeah, so I, I always love the journey of how people get to the places where they're at. Um, uh, you know, one thing that I did know, but a lot of people might not know, Ken, you brought it up that you started off as, as a baseball player and then right. navigated right. your journey into weightlifting um, and bodybuilding. Um, but another thing that some people may or may not know about you is somehow you got involved into the MMA world 
uh, right. as one of the head coaches. And, and this was a league that I loved. I really wish that it would have, uh, would have survived. It was called the IFL. They basically yeah. had team versus team team it was the first time that had ever been done um and you were one of the head coaches um so i'm curious you know i knew that you were a part of that but i never knew your journey on how you got into that so how did you become from this college baseball player to a bodybuilder into a a, a head coach for an mma uh team that was in a league yeah um well initially i was uh you know i was a baseball player but also uh, uh my first I wouldn't say sport, but activity, I guess. Physical activity was karate. And then I did judo. And uh, I did go pretty far, uh, you know, same, meaning that, uh, you know, I got black belts in judo, karate. I started when I was six. And, uh, you know, got in a lot of fights. <laughs> That's another experience and uh, education for fighting. Sure, sure. But, but yeah, and then, um, yeah, I always had a passion for fighting and uh, um, my baseball dream was shattered and started to go into bodybuilding. At that time, uh, you couldn't make a, basically make a career from uh, fighting like a uh, UFC or MMA fighting alone. And just the tough guys entered the tournament when UFC started and trying to find out who's the best. And that was about it. That was not a professional career you can actually make a you know, living from. Or uh, you don't know where it's, it's, it's going to go. And my best friend, Don, did it and all the way. But he wanted to be the just best fighter. That was the motivation. Not try to make a professional career like a baseball player, a football player. So I chose pro bodybuilding in that way. But at the same time, I was working the legendary uh, senator, fighter, pro wrestler of Japan, uh, Antonio Inoki. Uh, he fought. Ali 40 years ago, boxer against a fighter. And uh, at when Ali was at his prime, and uh, he was, Mr. Inoki became my supporter, and he opened up a dojo fighting pro wrestling gym in LA. So he assigned me also as the head coach of the team Inoki. All the fighters, UFC champions and uh, Olympic champions came to our place and went to Japan to fight and wrestle. And, uh, you know, I was able to manage their conditioning, strengthening training and, uh, nutrition. At the same time, I was pursuing my, you know, pro bodybuilding career. So that was the kind of way that I started to get into MMA. And, uh, uh, yeah. And Mr. Inoki, of course, he's not going to run the MMA fight team. He was bigger than that. He was like a mix uh, of man and Muhammad yeah. Ali. <laughs> Absolutely. No, Anoki, uh, it, for anybody who follows the sports knows, uh, Mr. Anoki is just a, a giant, uh, name in the, in the, in the sport. Um, and, yeah. and that, and that match between Anoki and Ali is considered the first, uh, technical mixed martial art match because right. it was two styles pinned against each other. Um, I know there was another one where, uh, Judo Jean LaBelle, had crossed over and, and competed against another one, but the Ali Anoki match was considered yeah. technically the first mixed martial arts match, which is amazing. Exactly. And and you another thing you brought up, um, you brought up your 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 friend Don Fry. Don right. Fry is also going to be one of the guests here at the uh, QC Fit Fest event alongside you. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that you guys. I don't know if, if you still do them or not, but there for a while you guys used to do workout videos. Um, how, you know, how, how did that go? And, and, uh, where can people find those videos? Are they still out there for people to find? No, we are not uh, selling that anymore, but I was early at uh, 2000 and nobody's ever done it that time. Right. Pro bodybuilder and a pro fighter and in training. And uh, that was the kind of a uh, idea we came up so we can get the, you know, both of the fans in the both industry. And uh, that's what we actually did also in Japan, fighting, pro wrestling and bodybuilding all together because they are somehow like cousins of each other. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, so but training, ultimate power training DVD series, uh, we are not selling it anymore. <laughs> Okay. Was, are they? Uh, can can you find them anywhere? Are they on YouTube or anywhere where people can find it? Or are they just kind of like just uh they were oh, just they, either you were a part of it or not? Oh, they can find it on t YouTube. Just to, you oh, know, go on, search uh, Ultimate Power Training by Ken Yasuda and Don Fry. Yeah, you can see it. 
Purpose of ultimate power training with Kenya suit and Don Fry. Yeah, the, I've seen a couple of those videos and, and they looked amazing. So, Joni, I'll go ahead and pass it back to you, hon. Thank you. Well, you know, mindset is such a huge thing. And Ken, you know, like when you were talking about um, not being able to be a baseball player, I imagine I, I have friends who have also missed that mark and suffered injuries as a result. And, you know, it can be really devastating to your life. And, you know, because mindset is so huge in how you approach life and how you approach your body, how you approach health and um, right. Can you share a little bit about your mindset and how you, you know, managed to make something that was so devastating you and, you know, flipped that script and turned right. it into you transmuted that energy and you, you made it a medicine. You, you alchemized that situation. Yeah. So how did you do that? What was your mental process like? It's uh, well, you know, I'm known as a samurai warrior, <laughs> right? It's it's related to a mentality of a samurai, ancient samurai warrior. Basically, uh, you know, uh, you can't be afraid of failing. And if you, you know, nothing goes well 100% all the time. That's normal. And, you know, nothing comes, you know, easily. It's the only way to make it to work hard. And uh, if things are difficult, that's the time if you give everything you've got to overcome and then after the difficult things come up, you, you overcome a difficult thing, that things will get much easier. But uh, it's a repetition of that. And you see, um, you know, uh, I, I thought my life was over after my baseball dream was shattered, which was my dream since I was 11. But then, uh, you know, I told myself I have to get up. I thought I was I failed in my life, let my parents down, supporters down. But uh, I had to get up and show, you know, who I am and uh, just prove it. And just by working harder, I set a different target. And that was the only thing I could do. And it's easy to give up anything and just be normal tomorrow, have nothing. But why should we do that? We only have one life and we give everything we got and to get what we want. And you have to work harder than anybody. And that's the, was my mentality. And I coached. Uh, I don't know if you know, and he retired Ichiro Suzuki. He was probably the best baseball player in baseball for sure. a while. Yeah, he was, a, he was a shortstop for the Mariners. He was amazing. Yeah, and he's the same thing. He, a lot of people said he was genius. No, he, this guy worked harder than anybody. <laughs> you know, the, from outside, it looks so easy that, that these guys made it, you know. But um, no, they, they are hard workers. Nothing comes easily. And, you know, I couldn't give up. Uh, you know, my life just because I failed in one thing and I tried again, tried it again. And, then, you know, once you achieve it, you win. So um, it just life is like that, you know, and things don't come easily. I appreciate Absolutely. your insight, Ken. I really do. Thank you so much. These are like golden nuggets yeah. <laughs> to share today on the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and to kind of segue into, I guess, kind of wrapping this up, you know, if anybody else wants to find those nuggets or hear about these uh, other uh, interesting stories about Ken, uh, obviously make sure you come visit us uh, September 11th down the river center. Um, right. You know, QC Fit Fest is going to be full. We have, health coaches, personal trainers, doctors, martial art masters, uh, wellness professionals, professional athletes, and obviously world-class bodybuilders like Ken, um, you know, make sure to stop by his booth. Um, he's going to be there. Ask him as many questions as you have. Ask him workout techniques. Ask him uh, what food uh, fuels the body properly and, and, and anything in between. Um, Ken, I'm going to pass the last word back to Joni, but I just want you to say, I just want you to know I, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to jump on the interview with us and uh, myself and everyone else in the community is very excited to, to see you September 11th. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yep. Thank you so much, Ken. And thank you, Chris, as well. Ken, uh, is there something that you could say that would make, a, let's see, a skeptic maybe of bodybuilding or someone who might be afraid of weightlifting because they think they might get too bulky or they think everyone mm -hmm. in bodybuilding is on testosterone shots, which is totally not true. Uh, right. what's, what's one last word of encouragement and motivation that you could give uh, to start picking up some weights? For myself included. <laughs> this is medicine for me too. Yeah. Well, it's like um, there are always different ways to achieve your goal. 
So whatever you hear from other people might be one way. And, you know, you just shouldn't get stuck with it. And if you want to know different ways to achieve something like, okay, you want to sculpt your body, you want to get bigger, or you don't want to get bigger and stronger, that's something. I know a lot of ways, and not just for bodybuilding, but MMA training or sports training. And, uh, you know, uh, anybody is welcome to come up to me and uh, pick my brain. <laughs> And uh, I'll do my best to help each person out. So. That's amazing. So this is the kind of interaction that you're going to get at QC Fit Fest. You're going to have, you know, access to some of the world's best trained, most knowledgeable elite athletes on the planet. And they're going to be at QC Fit Fest Saturday, September 11th at the River Center. So make sure you head over to QCFitFest.com to learn more, become a vendor, join our mission. Ken Yashuda, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. Thank you, guys.